pain that uh, their plight and the suffering that they have gone through has not really been uh, the, the focus of uh, the, the attention of uh, people uh, around the world, but in particular uh, in our own neighborhood. And I think uh, India, which has a very noble tradition of providing shelter uh, to people from across the world uh, through the ages, who have uh, seen India as a refuge, uh, as a place where they could feel uh, you know, safe and uh, welcome. Uh, this tradition is something that we must not uh, lose sight of. So the uh, issue here is uh, what is the relationship uh, between uh, geopolitics, uh, international law, morality, uh, and how does this really apply to the Rohingya uh, issue? So it is commonly felt that uh, you know, geopolitics uh, sometimes really abstracts from uh, the concerns uh, of, and interests of uh, ordinary people. That this is talking about really uh, very large, uh, larger forces that uh, uh, are involved in uh, interrelations among uh, states, uh, geopolitical context. But uh, in the geopolitical context that we speak about, it is essentially states that we are talking about. Very rarely do we talk about the people who inhabit uh, the state. And uh, my mind goes back to 1893. Parliament of Religions, Chicago, Swami Vivekananda, who started his address by saying, Sisters and brothers of America, he disarmed the audience, not only those who were present there, but many who listened to him, who read him later. Now, why? That is because he didn't say ladies and gentlemen. By uh, calling them sisters and brothers, he illustrated Vasudevaika Brahmara. The whole world is, the whole humanity is one family. He said, I am proud to belong to a nation which has uh, <coughs> sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and of all nations of the earth. I'll be focusing largely on a very realistic appraisal of the situation and I'll be bringing in the geopolitical dimension of, of the Rohingya problem uh, before you. Uh, I think this is a good initiative uh, taken by Suhas. Uh, I think the motive is very much, first of all, to share together what we know about this problem uh, and thereby increase the arc of awareness and knowledge uh, each of us knows a little bit, but not the whole thing. And uh, in the process, we can shape and mold public opinion and perhaps uh, attempt to influence policy. I think this is the basic intention. So first, let me uh, uh, talk just a bit about the issue. Uh, and here, uh, I really request you to remember two critical dates uh, uh, of the present time. Uh, 25th August 2017, when uh, Myanmar military action began in response to, to alleged ARSA terrorist attacks. And the result was that it triggered a massive exodus of the Rohingya population 
which was estimated to be about 1.1 million people in the Rakhine state at that time. I have no hesitation in saying that Myanmar should be held responsible for that. <coughs> and why Myanmar should be held responsible for that? Because for past years, decades, Myanmar has been trying to homogenize itself. It wants to be a country only of the Bahamans. They have serious problems with many other ethnic groups, not only Rohingyas. And for years they have been fighting them. And the Chinese, somebody mentioned about it, I think the Chinese have made a beautiful use of their internal ethnic problems to keep Myanmar under its influence in a manner that they want to. But this is not only Myanmar's problem. I think increasing number of countries are trying to homogenize. Sorry for my saying, so you are India now. And therein lies the problem. Whether it is Sri Lanka, now Nepal, Bhutan, in your, in, in your own, own borderland. Now if this homogenization goes on, the world is diverse, you like it or not. 